Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the different wireless security methods and protocols that are used in wireless networks. Now, most of us have connected to a Wi-Fi network with our laptop, tablet, or even our smartphone. And to join that network with our device, you had to select the network name and you had to supply a password. Now, Wi-Fi networks can be just open with no password required. So that means that anybody can join it. However, in the majority of cases, Wi-Fi networks will be secure and will require a password. Now, there are several different protocols that are used for securing a Wi-Fi network. So let's start with a secure protocol called WEP. WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy, was developed in 1999, and it's the earliest security protocol that was used for wireless networks. And also, as its name implies, it's meant to supply the same security to wireless networks as it did for wired networks. However, this turned out not to be the case because after a time, it was found out that the 40-bit encryption key that WEP used was vulnerable and not secure, and therefore it was easily hackable. So that's why today WEP is no longer used and modern Wi-Fi routers won't even have it as an option anymore. So a better security protocol was needed for wireless networks. And that brings us to WPA. WPA, or Wi-Fi Protected Access, is another wireless security protocol that was developed to solve the problems of WEP. WPA is far better than WEP, and this is because it uses a stronger encryption method called TKIP which stands for Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. And TKIP dynamically changes its keys as it's being used. And this ensures data integrity. But even though WPA is more secure than WEP, even today WPA is outdated because TKIP did have some vulnerabilities. And that brings us to WPA2. WPA2 was developed to provide even stronger security than WPA, and it does this by requiring the use of a stronger encryption method. While WPA uses TKIP for encryption, which is known to have some limitations, WPA2 uses AES, which stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. AES uses a symmetric encryption algorithm which makes it strong enough to resist a brute force attack. In fact, AES is so secure that the U.S. federal government has adopted it and is now using it to encrypt sensitive government data. Now, when you log into the Wi-Fi router's configuration page and you go into the Wi-Fi security section, this is where you would find the different security protocols that you can choose from to protect your Wi-Fi network. So here is an example from an older Linksys router. And here you can see the WEP, WPA, and WPA2 protocols that we discussed. Now, as I said, this router is a few years old and it still has WEP as an option. However, newer routers, like this one here, won't even have WEP as an option because WEP is weak and outdated and is no longer used. And thank God for that because it was garbage. Now you will also notice that on both of these routers, there's an option that has both WPA and WPA2. And this is a mixed security option. This option enables WPA and WPA2 at the same time. So it'll use both TKIP and AES security. Now the reason for this option is for compatibility purposes because some older devices like prior to 2006 may not be compatible with using AES encryption that's used with WPA2. And so these older devices will connect to the older WPA protocol. But at the same time, modern devices will connect to WPA2. Now, some people might ask, why not just choose the mixed option all the time, since it's the most compatible with all devices? Well, you can do this, but the problem is, is that in addition to using AES, it's also using TKIP. And since TKIP is not as strong as AES, you're leaving your network more vulnerable to a breach. However, if all of your devices are modern, then the best option is to choose WPA2, which only uses AES. 
Now the next generation of wireless security is WPA3. WPA3 was introduced in 2018, and according to the official Wi-Fi website, wifi.org, WPA3 provides cutting-edge security protocols to the market. It adds new features to simplify Wi-Fi security and enable more robust authentication. And it will receive increased protections from password guessing attempts. Now, WPA3 won't be available on every Wi-Fi router that you purchase today because it was just introduced last year. However, you will start to see it more and more on Wi-Fi products in the next few months. Now, so far we discussed a few password-protected security protocols, but there is another wireless security method that doesn't require you to type in a password, and this method is called WPS. WPS stands for Wi-Fi Protected Setup, and WPS was designed for people who know little about wireless networks to make it as easy as possible for their devices to join a wireless network. So here is a WPS configuration page for our router. And there are a couple of different methods that are used with WPS. But by far the most common method is the push button method. So with this method, you would just press a couple of buttons and then you'll be connected. So for example, most routers today will have a physical WPS button that you can press. And a lot of Wi-Fi printers will also have a software or physical WPS button. So let's say you wanted to connect this wireless printer to your Wi-Fi network. So you would press the WPS button on your Wi-Fi router, and within two minutes you would press the WPS button on your printer. And then your printer would connect to the Wi-Fi router in a few seconds. And that's really as simple as it gets. And you can also use method 2 if you want, if your client has a WPS PIN number. So you would just enter that PIN number into the field below, and within a few seconds, it'll connect. So as stated before, WPS is the easiest way to join a wireless network. And a lot of manufacturers have built their wireless products with WPS. And this is to make it as simple as possible for their customers to join their device to a wireless network. Now there's one more method we need to talk about and this is called the access control or in some routers it's called the MAC filter and with this option you can either allow or block devices from joining your network. Every network adapter has a MAC address. A MAC address is a hexadecimal number that uniquely identifies each device on a network. And with access control, you can either allow or block access by using the device's MAC address. When a device is blocked, it would only be able to get an IP address from your router, but it won't be able to communicate with any other device. And it would not be able to connect to the internet. So the access control is just an extra layer of security that's in addition to your Wi-Fi password. And the access control is also for wired devices.